This is Woodman here, and I wanted to talk to you about a common returning term in spirituality, the egregor. In magical and other occult traditions, it is typically seen as having an independent existence. But in other types of esotericism, it is merely the collective mind of a religious community, either esoteric or exoteric. In the latter sense, as a collective mind, the term collective entity is preferred by Rene Guénon, and it is synonymous, synonymous, sorry, with egregor. In the apocryphal Book of Enoch, the term had referred to these angelic beings, which were known as the Watchers, and it was also used by associated Enochian traditions to refer to the specific rituals and practices associated with these entities. Some other literary and religious works, such as the manuscript found in Saragossa, have also made references to these angelic beings. So let's delve a little bit more into how it's been described as an independent angelic being. Egregors had been quite the independent entities in the Book of Enoch, and there was no notion of them arising from a collective. In literature, especially older literature, egregors have been straightforward references to these Enochian entities. This was the case in Jan Pataki's novel, The Manuscript Found in Saragossa, which referred to egregors as the most illustrious of fallen angels. The French author Victor Hugo, um, and I know from Les Miserables, but in this case we're going to refer to as La Légion des Siècles, 1859, The Legend of the Ages, also uses the word egregor first as an adjective and then as a noun, while leaving the meaning obscure on the whole. What about as a spiritual lead? Again, we're not talking about the collective concept giving rise to an entity. We're just talking about other um, cases in which egregor has been defined. So the traditionalist school philosopher Julius Evola, in his revolt against the modern world, referred to an elite of spiritually aware people who keep tradition alive as those who are awake, whom in Greek are called the egregor, and apparently alluding to the watchers, and thus the most literal sense of their name, uh, which is wakeful or awake. Now we get more to the collective and the group mind. In esotericism, the term egregor has been used to denote a group mind or a collective consciousness, particularly of a religious community. As René Guénon said, the collective, in its psychic as well as its corporeal aspects, is nothing but a simple extension of the individual, and thus has absolutely nothing transcendent with respect to it as opposed to a spiritual influence, which usually are from a wholly different order. This usage was followed by Gnosis Magazine and also by uh, Olavo de Carvalho, and according to Guénon, uh, began with Eliphas Levi, what about as a further extension, which is an independent magical being arising from the collective mind, right? Now, before we're just returning to the collective mind, but now we're actually saying the collective mind can become its own independent entity. So in the thought form of Charles uh, Gounod's music, uh, according to Annie Besant and C.W. Leadbeater in Thought Forms, 1901, uh, some authors seem to have merged the esoteric concept with the Enochian concept to arrive at an idea of spiritual entities that feed off the thoughts and energies of a unified magnitude. If we look at a website known as uh, occultist.net, it describes it in this way, while nevertheless having more of a life of their own, their more specific features and powers will depend on the particular author. Kate Strong, writing for the newsletter Know Thyself, Heal Thyself, described egregors as symbols, ideas, or ideals that exist in the collective psyche of a group of people and are thought to have an autonomous existence. This usage seems to have come largely from the meditations on the tarot, as may be seen in the next section. The concept of a tulpa is similar, as Gary Lachman and Mark Stavish noted.
in the work of the Frater Tenebris. Following this usage, though giving no citations, the glossary in the 2022 book, The Philosophy of Dark Paganism, by Frater Tenebris, defines an egregor as an occult term for an independently functioning spiritual entity uh, created by one or more magic practitioners. Many egregors begin as thought forms, but then become capable of operating independently of the practitioners. It defines the thought form as an esoteric entity created by magic, and magic as a spiritual practice and process to influence the probability of events. The book itself mentions egregors in the context of archetypism, a view that understands the different gods and goddesses as either psychological structures, similar to Carl Jung's archetypes, or different currents of arcane energy found in the cosmos that are anthropomorphized. Noting that some archetypists consider the gods to be thought forms created from worship and prayer by generations of believers, it says that over time these thought forms may become egregors that exhibit some autonomy apart from their worshipers, and that one might imagine these gods along the line of Neil Gaiman's deities in the novel American Gods in Theosophy. Well, in Theosophy now, egregors have been uh, written by uh, Mauricio Medeiros uh, for the Theosophist website Estudo Theosophico, which defined an egregor as an astral, mental, or spiritual construct sustained by several people over a long period of time, giving it a character of permanence that does not depend on any particular individual. While saying that egregors have no life of their own, Maderos nevertheless emphasized their independence, noting that egregors can be associated with physical locations, so that when we enter an environment and feel uncomfortable, what we are often experiencing or sensing is the clash between energies expressed by the egregors of the place and as contrasted against our own energies. In the nutshell, I've even seen this come up in some fantasy uh, role playing that the idea is that you know you have these pantheons and the pantheons are filled with these deities, but that the deities are largely powered by their worshipers. In other words, yes, they are beings that have some independent form, but maybe their independent form is really almost like maybe top of the line human per se. And so it is the belief of their worshipers that causes these individuals to exceed human limitation, to be able to do divine things because of the energy and force of power given to them by their believers, by their worshipers. And so in this sense, religion is needing to be um, imprinted upon generations of people because so long as the people continue to earnestly believe then this figure will in fact have the power of the gods and act as a deity but again even if no one believed anymore at the worst scenario they'd probably be about as weak as a strong human so in other words they don't just evaporate from existence they are there there are some type of independent entity that makes up this this um this deity right but that they need the faith of their worshipers to really give them their powers to really give them their domains to really allow them to exert a great deal of control over various aspects of our universe nonetheless whatever you choose to believe about egregors they are a very fascinating concept that has been referred to in many different ways uh, obviously i refer to you as to the occult concept, I referred you to uh, a concept 
which is psychological. I uh, refer to you to a concept that comes from esoteric practice and, 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 and rituals and traditions. Uh, I've referred to you to a powerful thought form. And I've also referred you to the idea that even groupthink can give rise to the egregor. So I hope you enjoyed this message. If you're new here, welcome aboard. This is Safe Space. You're welcome. If you are returning, I thank you for your support. You make this channel great. I can't do it without you. I love you. I love you. And in the name of the Most High God, I pray for your blessings and your continued protection all throughout the day. Woodman signing off with this message. Take care of yourselves. Bye.